The worlds of Batman and Superman collide. And they're not even in it. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to the show. So glad to see you all once again and thank you for joining us here on the program. If you're new here, then thank you for joining us just the same because I think you're going to like what you find here because this is where we're going back and looking at TV shows that we grew up on in the 80s and 90s. And right now we're working through a series talking about the new Batman adventures. So if this sounds like something that you might enjoy, then just hop below and hit the subscribe button. Click the like while you're at it. I'm click the like button while you're at it because I think you're going to like what you see here because today we're talking about Girls Night Out which originally aired on October 17th, 1998. And the hits just keep on coming. So this is a cool episode. I, I love the setup of this of giving the female heroes of both Superman and Batman an opportunity to kind of take the spotlight and go on their own mission. And it only seemed appropriate that they would face off against both Superman and Batman female villains. And I like the idea of having all these female heroes, but there's some elements of this episode that is really dated and did not age well. But we'll talk all about that right after our 60-second Joker Bomb rundown of the episode. You know what? In honor of this episode, I'm going to make it a Harley Quinn bomb for uh, the episode. So I'm going to try to give you a complete synopsis of the episode in 60 seconds or less just to keep this episode moving forward. Livewire is being transported to Gotham, and while she's there, there's some down power lines. She sucks the energy and escapes. Batgirl's on patrol. Batman is off and going to be gone for 48 hours. He says, watch over the city. She gets word of this. Batman gets word of this, and he calls, tries to call Superman to go check in on this, but he instead gets Kara, who is Supergirl, obviously, and so she goes, oh, I'm not going to call Superman. I'm going to take care of this myself. So she shows up. Batgirl, Supergirl fight Livewire uh, until uh, uh, Livewire runs out of juice and Livewire then goes into uh, where Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn are hiding out and says, hey, let's team up and they go and rob a bunch of ATM machines and go on a shopping spree. Supergirl and Batgirl once again show up and fight and duel until they prevail. It's really about it. I mean, that that's the general synopsis. Bullock's in there somewhere. So she smoked you. We put up a fight. And lost. So this has come up a couple of times in some of the past episodes that these new Batman adventures really kind of spend a little bit more time sharing the spotlight, sharing the stories with the other Batman family members, Batgirl, Robin, Nightwing. So this provides a perfect opportunity to tell a story featuring the female heroes, which is really pretty cool. And I like that they just take Superman and Batman completely out of this. Yeah, they throw a little thing in the beginning explaining that I'll be back in Gotham in less than 48 hours. In the meantime, be careful. I don't know if that was necessarily needed because... It, it, it should have just supported on its own that Batgirl's off doing her own missions while Batman is doing his own thing. But they did kind of tie in. It was a contractual thing. They had to give Kevin Conroy a, a little cameo in this episode. If he wants to get on top of the story, he needs to get there right away. And they didn't just stop there. They then go further to bring in Supergirl. So now we have another true crossover episode with not Superman and Batman, but now Batgirl and Supergirl, which I think is just fun. And this series provides the platform to be able to do that prior to getting into to Justice League. We now have Supergirl as a well-established character. And I believe, I'll have to look at the airing order of this, but I think this is just the second appearance of Supergirl and is now featured in a Batman episode. And then I like as well that they kind of make this a complete all-girl episode and bring in Livewire, who is a supervillain from the Superman universe, and bring her into Gotham. And then they also team up with another pair of villains in the uh, in the Batman world with 
Poison Ivy, and Harley Quinn. What do you say we get dialed up and go into town? But unfortunately, I feel like that's where the cleverness stopped. They took this great opportunity to tell a woman-centered episode, then just kind of dropped the ball. There isn't a great story involved in this. I mean, first of all, the premise of this whole episode is that Livewire escapes and doesn't have a well-thought-out plan and just starts robbing places. Now, I don't know if Livewire was the best pick for this episode because Livewire's whole thing is she is trying to get back at Superman for making her the way she is and has this vendetta against Superman. So you take her out of Metropolis, you take her away from Superman, and you put her in Gotham. What else is she going to do? An empty mall. An unguarded cash machine? Who says life ain't fair? And then when she finally teams up with Harley and Ivy, which we've seen that partnership before, and again, that's where I feel like the writing got a little lazy because this introductory scene with Poison Ivy and Harley is almost ripped directly from Holiday Nights when they are sitting there talking about being bored and I want to go out. And I've told you a thousand times we have to keep a low profile. Surprise, surprise, in this episode, they go out on a shopping spree. First, they rob a bunch of ATM machines, which which was just filler because obviously they're intending to just steal a bunch of merchandise and clothing and such. So they don't really need money to do that. And this is one of those areas where I feel like the episode didn't age well. I think today there is a conscious effort to move away from some of the past tropes and, and stereotypical ways of handling female characters. And one of those being this kind of stereotypical, well, what is a supervillain female going to do? Well, she's going to go on a shopping spree. Too dark. Too light. Why couldn't she come up with a plan to take over the city or to stop Batman or to destroy something, something, something more than just, hey, we're bored. Let's go shopping. That's 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 an old trope that is very dated. And it makes one for the episode to be kind of flat in the sense of Batgirl and Supergirl first chance to kind of prove themselves and be out on their own and 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 defending the city without the their male counterparts. And they're really just stopping petty thieves. Halt! I mean, stop! I mean... And I think the other challenge, although it's it's neat as a crossover episode that they have a lot of different characters in there. I mean, they even throw Penguin in this, for crying out loud. Uh, again, a misuse or underutilized version of Penguin, as they've typically done in the animated series. Ladies, ladies, please. I run a respectable club here. It's neat seeing all those characters, but it feels a little bit like, well, we don't know what to do with one female character, so let's just add a bunch of them. And they kind of throw this episode away. And, and I think that with a little bit more effort and a little bit more thought, what is a, a great opportunity that to put Supergirl and, and Batgirl in a situation where only they can solve this crime or, or stop this criminal? You know, maybe even stretch it out to a two-parter and really do an intricate story rather than just, it just turns into cops and robbers with women. What's with her? She shopped till she dropped. I do like, though, how we get to see even the the differences of Batman and Superman played out through Supergirl and Batgirl. They each have their strengths and abilities and talents and, and preferred methods of going into a fight. But we get to see those differences where Supergirl, obviously, and it isn't one is better or worse than the other, or weaker or stronger. It's just a different skill set where Supergirl obviously has flight and strength and all those uh, superpowers at her disposal. Batgirl has the brains and, and thinks through and figures out a different way of stopping the crime. So each of their talents are utilized really well in those fights, just in the fact that that. Batgirl figures out to use the silicone spray or, or, or bomb there to tamper down Livewire's powers, whereas even with that, Batgirl gets into a situation where, you know, she needs the strength of Supergirl. So I think those elements complement each other really well, and I would have liked, again, I feel like they could have built more out on that. I guess what they say is true. 
The grass is always greener. Another kind of weird spot in this episode is the trust that it's immediately developed between Batgirl and Supergirl that when they're in the hideout, they just, they don't talk about it. They just, Batgirl has her mask off. Really doesn't make a lot of reference to that of making a big deal out of giving up her secret identity. It just is. So what are we going to do now? We're going to find them under whatever rock they're hiding. You know, when, when now that we have movies like Captain Marvel, which if you haven't seen that movie, you got to go check it out. It is absolutely incredible, very enjoyable. And it is that female superhero lead that I think we've been needing and wanting. It isn't a good movie because she's a woman. It isn't a, you know, she isn't a good superhero for being a woman. It is just a great superhero movie. It's a she is a great super super little, 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 little. she's a great superhero, and she happens to be a woman. To me, I think that that's the right mixture of what we've been seeking. And I don't want to give away any spoilers, but there's a great line towards the end of the movie in kind of the big final battle that she says to to the person she's fighting. I don't even want to uh, give that much away that I think was a great subtle nod to Hollywood to say, this is how these characters should be done. And I think it, it it's a great illustration of how far we've come since the 90s in in the ending of this episode where, where Barbara and Kara are sitting on the couch watching TV and previous in the episode, Bullock was not wanting to work with them and wanted Batman or Superman to be there. And and he has this line on TV, you know, kind of giving his approval to them and they're excited about it. That need to put that line in the episode just showcases this uh, need for male approval, which which is one of the biggest reasons why this episode is is a little dated. Impressive. Well, they show some potential. Yes! <laughs> so when it comes time to rank this episode, I, I think I'm being pretty hard on this episode because of the current time that we're living in right now and and how this episode kind of feels a little dated and things that I wouldn't have noticed or wouldn't have thought about 20 years ago watching this episode that now are are, are a big deal. But I don't want you to get me wrong that that it, it, it doesn't make this a bad episode. I think it's a good episode and I think it's entertaining on a whole of the episode. It's not a great story. It, it isn't the kind of story that stacks up against the other episodes. I feel like I wanted to like this episode more. Like I said, the story just kind of turns into a a villain robbing a store and superhero stopping them. It falls at the number 13 spot of my favorite episode. It falls just below Ultimate Thrill, another female supervillain episode. Again, that story is not all that spectacular, but I think the motif around Roxy Rocket with the rocket packs and, and aeronautics, aviation, flying things is more appealing to me personally. So that's how that one was able to beat this episode out. But it does beat out Joker's Millions because that episode was just weird. Remember the fake Harleys? That was odd. It had to end sometime, Brad girl. So this, I think, is the first team up of Supergirl and Batgirl. So what's your favorite uh, storyline? They, they kind of follow this friendship through the rest of the series. Uh, into Justice League and and beyond and 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 certainly in the comic books. So there's been a lot of great stories told between these two characters. So what's your favorite story between Batgirl and Supergirl? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this episode, then please click the like button. If you want to see more episodes like this, then just hit subscribe. I have new episodes coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. And next up, we're going to be talking about the episode Chemistry. So you don't want to miss that. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Andy Canode, and I'll see you soon.